frustrating year for you, as you mentioned at the, the press conference, but in the end, it's led to maybe the biggest, the biggest one of all. Uh, first of all, how does it feel to, to finally be here after so many frustrating months? Oh man, it's amazing. It's huge, huge opportunity for me and my team. Uh, we've come a long way. This is, uh, this is everything I've ever wanted. I'm gonna fight for a world title. It's any, any fighter's dream. And I'm gonna do what I do best, and that's come to fight. And I'm gonna do everything I can to get that win. Uh, this is obviously the toughest fight of my life. I'm fighting one of the pro prospect of the year last year. You know, no, no fight's gonna be easy at the world title level. Um, any world title shot, all these guys, all these world title holders are amazing. They're all really good. Like I said, I'll fight anybody. As long if a world title is involved, I don't care who you are. I'll fight you, and I'll try to take that world title home with me. Uh, it's been a tough year, obviously. Tough summer. Didn't get those two fights. I was supposed to fight in England twice. First guy pulled out, Kelbrook, three three weeks notice. Then I'm about to get on the plane, and then the other guy pulls out because he had an eye injury. So we still went to England, enjoyed it, went to the fights, and then um, came back. I had a couple. I'm a do athlete, so I race, I run, I bike, I run. So I had three races this year. So I'm in great shape physically, uh, mentally. I'm mentally. I've just, I've been on a roller coaster ride all summer, but finally the roller coaster stopped and I'm ready to go now, right? So, uh, man, this just to be on this card is just amazing for me. And Triple G and Canelo are two of my favorite fighters. So I'm, I'm opening the stage for them. And uh, I, I'm just so excited to show people who I am since nobody knows who I am really in the States or Europe other than getting those, that big fight with Kel Brook. People kind of know who I am now. But I didn't get the fight to show them really who I am. Um, but a lot of people are going to know who I am after this Saturday night because I'm giving I'm going to I'm going to give this crowd a huge huge fight that they're going to they're going to remember for sure and whatever happens happens but obviously I'm coming to win. Just rewind a few months back to the the whole Kel Brook incident. Now there were there were sort of rumours and whispers before it was officially confirmed that uh, that he was going to be out and the fight was off. How, what was your how did it, it was come to you? Presumably you were in the gym and then you just hear. Roller coaster ride, man. Even for you? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I'm fighting, I'm not fighting, I'm fighting, I'm not fighting, I'm fighting, I'm not fighting. I'm like, am I fighting or am I not? And then we found out, he, he's like, he pulled out. I found out from some people out there, they told me that's because he wasn't getting paid enough. Right. But he was training when I got there still. Like, I think it was all a joke and he just wanted to get paid. I understand that. Why does he want to fight someone like me when no one knows who I am and if I beat him, then what? Mm. Then, the, then, the, then that just screws him from the big payday. I understand that, but why take the fight in the first place, mm. right? But it is what it is. Nothing do, do against see, them. Do you think you might fight him down the if he if he doesn't go back I down to ten, 10 seven? I doubt it. He wants. I, he's at the end of his career. I think mm. uh, he wants just the big money fights and he wants to cash out. I'm sure. Mm. Um, but like I said, I'll fight anybody anywhere. Just send me the contract and let me know when I'm fighting. As long as it's not like a week or two notice. <laughs> Give me at least, you know. I only had five weeks for this one, but um, like I said before, I'll, I'll fight anybody at any time. Just give me a couple weeks' notice at least, and I'm always in shape now that I quit my job. So I used to work a full-time job installing windows and doors. Uh, and up until when? Uh, until last year. Yeah, okay. Was, and my whole career, I had a full-time job. So it was a, it was a tough it was a tough go, but now I'm finally training full-time like a lot of these fighters do, mm. and it makes a huge difference on my training. So I'm just gonna have to do everything I did. To get rid of, we had a long career for this. And it was good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just really, really happy with this opportunity to be here in Ontario. We only get like one or two cameras, yeah. <laughs> so we're lucky. And, and, we're, we're really lucky right now. And then after the Kell Brook incident, and then we hear you're fighting Sam Eggington. So we're like, oh, we're going to get Brandon Cook in the UK after all. But then that one falls through too. Yeah. What was the situation there? Uh, he had an eye injury happen in sparring. Right. And that was the day we were leaving. <laughs> and he just got smoked by the guy the other Did day. Did you see that? Oh, man. Felt bad for the guy. Um, I'm way better than that guy he fought. So I'm just, it would have been worse for him. So uh, nothing bad against Sam. He's a tough fighter. It just sucks that that happened to him. A week's notice, this guy comes in out of nowhere from I don't even know what country and beat him. So, Tanzania. Yeah, so. like that sucks for his career now, right? Mm. Um, he was hoping to get a big fight on um, the Oshawa cart, the J Anthony Joshua cart yeah. against uh, 
I think I heard Brandon, Brandon Rios. Rios. Yeah. yeah, that just screwed that. So yeah. like, you got to be careful who you fight, right? Mm. Just like them, they don't know who I am. So they obviously think I'm a nobody, and they're gonna know I'm somebody after Saturday night. Just finally on that, Jaime Munguia, as his manager said, like six months ago, no one really no knew one, who he yep. was. Um, he's, he's done very well, uh, some big wins already on his career. Um, he seems to be a uh, very powerful guy. Yep. Um, how do you approach someone like that? And, and it's going to be the same thing that happened with me in Montreal. I was, in, I was a big underdog. Um, he kind of, Butler's, Stephen Butler's kind of the same type of style as he is. But I would say Jaime McGee is a better boxer and he's a little bigger. But it's the same thing. i got to be smart, keep my hands up and just do what I do best and fight, but fight smart because I, I can't do what he did his last fight. Um, come in there and just try to rip your head off because you're going to get caught like he did with Liam Smith. And if I catch him on the chin, I'm telling you right now, he's going to be laying on the canvas. Mm. Like I just got to catch him flush. I catch him flush, there's no way he's staying up. Like those shots he took from Liam Smith, he took a ton of them. He's not going to take a ton of them like that from me. I'm telling you right now, I have more power and he's gonna he's gonna realize Liam's a really great boxer nothing against him I'm just I just know how hard I hit and if I hit him on the chin clean with one of my big power shots he's gonna realize that he met they all messed up and they picked the wrong opponent do, do you feel like they might be overlooking you a they bit? definitely over they're already looking about his next fight in December mm. we'll see what happens after Saturday night and see if he's fighting in December mm.